San Antonio man killed by a wrong way driver being honored at today's Rose Parade in California. And we're going to check in on San Antonio's first newborn of 2023. We saw a little baby a second ago. Oh, look at that cute little thing. First one. What, what, two days old now? Growing up fast. And there's a live look at the roads outside with trans guide. Steve Cavazos has got all that for you. My co-host has got your forecast. We'll be right back. You're watching Good Morning San Antonio. This morning on GMSA, a San Antonio man killed by a wrong way driver now being honored at today's Rose Parade. Why his mission to save others is still being accomplished. Plus, San Antonio firefighters battle a blaze on the city's west side, close to downtown. What they're saying happened overnight. And outside with live can had a little moisture in the air this morning. Had some oh, wet spots around the roads, but couldn't exactly figure out where it was coming from because you couldn't see anything on your windshield. So it was a weird day already. <laughs> and it's only the second day of January. From Chase at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. And good morning. Once again, it is January 2nd, 2023. 2023 is like, I'm here. Yeah. Let's do it. That's yeah. what it's saying. All right, well, That's there you go. That's what it's saying. Okay. <laughs> Let's I'm gonna, do it. I'm going to jump ahead a week. TCU or Georgia? Who you oh. Pick? oh, well, I got to go with TCU because they're a Texas team. Okay. Right? Georgia's Big pretty tough, team. though. Yeah. Although TCU, boy, they're they're. That defensive was, uh, line. That was a good game. They, yeah, they sure did show Michigan what, what was ah, what. So Michigan was supposed to be, you know. I know. Best offensive line in the country. Yeah. And TCU just manhandled them. So that's going to be a good game, though, because be. Georgia did not dominate Ohio State as much as a lot of people thought. So anyway, hi, good morning. And uh, we're starting off. Uh, <laughs> we've got maybe a few damp spots on the road. I saw a couple of them this morning, but like uh, David was talking about, there's no mist on the windshields at all. There may be a little bit out there. Uh, seven miles visibility, Bernie stage has actually improved somewhat. There's hints of fog around the area. More out to the west. Rock Springs has uh, some of the thickest fog, which is not pea soup by any means. Uh, two miles visibility at Eagle Pass, five Victoria. Temperatures are nearly 30 degrees above normal. 41 is the normal low right now, and we've got a ton of Mount Cedar out there. I don't know about you. It was hitting me a little bit yesterday, and the updated count, of course, is going to be coming out in about an uh, hour, hour and a half or so. Temperature is going to stay steady this morning with all the cloud cover, the humidity out there, and wind out of the southeast today. And then by late this morning, noon we'll see perhaps a peak or two of sunshine especially out to the west and then more sunshine later on this afternoon we're going to make it up to 74 at noon and then top off today at 80 so we'll still be oh gosh anywhere 15 20 degrees above normal bit more in the way of some sunshine and then some clear skies to start off this evening got a front moving through here later on tonight it's not one of those big blasts of cold air but at least it's going to get rid of this humidity because boy oh boy the humidity is just sky high this morning and then we do have a stronger front moving through we'll talk about that way down the road details just a couple of minutes traffic authority mr cavazos Pretty good, smooth yeah, going? It's been smooth all morning long, Mike. And let's hope it stays that way. But obviously, this is that hour where things really start to change. Just check it out right behind me. We see a few more folks out there. 410 at State Highway 151. Um, and now, we mentioned the, the damp roads. You want to keep an eye out for that. But thankfully, the commute hasn't been hindered by anything really just yet. But areas that we will watch closely, you know, 281 is going to be busy as the morning commute does get rolling. And also, check out 280 uh, US 90. Pardon me, at Couples. Those east and westbound lanes tend to pick up with traffic around this time. You want to keep an eye out here. 410 eastbound at I-10, your crossroads. We do have some road debris that was reported by TxDOT, so make sure that you are staying vigilant out on the roadways. Although it has been a quiet start as we give you that view of the metropolitan area, there's really no need to be uh, the to feel like you need to rush out the door, but give yourself plenty of time. Even if you're traveling in from any of these communities, we're still on the green there. Pleasant drive from I-37 coming in from Pleasanton in those northbound lanes with 28 minutes, and it's the usual drive time on US-90, 30 minutes on uh, those eastbound lanes and right now that arrival from Lytle 30 uh, 16 minutes on I 35 northbound. So again, things are fine, uh, but as we get it back here on trans guide 37 at Houston, a quiet shop, but we jump over here and show you that some of the things like 37 at Fair Avenue looks the same, but some folks are waking up early with us getting the morning started early. So just to make sure that you drive carefully. We're going to have updates on some closures coming up in the next few minutes. David Tiffany.
Thank you, Stephen. You this morning, San Antonio police are trying to find the person who shot a teen in a drive by shooting overnight. It happened just after midnight in the 4100 block of I 10 East. Police say the 16 year old was sitting on a couch inside a home when he was shot in the arm. SAPD says the only description of the suspect's vehicle so far is that it was a dark colored sedan. No word on the teen's official condition. And firefighters tackled a blaze at an unoccupied half of a duplex on the city's west side close to downtown. Flames broke out along North Colorado Street around 245 this morning. People who lived in the other half of the duplex were displaced. The Red Cross was called out to help those residents. So far, investigators haven't determined the cause of that fire. New details this morning on a car fire so intense, investigators are still trying to figure out how many people died inside. Only hours into the new year, San Antonio police say the driver crashed into a concrete pillar, setting the car on fire. This was the scene in the 8200 block of I-35 around 4.30 yesterday. Officers say it appears the car crossed over three lanes before driving off the highway and slamming into the pillar at the on-ramp. No other vehicle was involved in the crash. Firefighters have it a busy weekend. There's another fire at a northeast side gas station. We're told the fire started in the back. There are a lot of highly flammable materials in that area, including grease used in the store's kitchen. The fire broke out about 2 o'clock yesterday at the Shell gas station in the 5100 block of Randolph Boulevard and Crestway Drive. It's off of I-35. Close to 30 fire units responded to the scene. Firefighters say the gas station was open at the time of the fire, but so far there are no reports of anyone being injured. The bulk of the damage is contained to the store and not the gas pumps. Looking ahead, state lawmakers will head to Austin next week. The 88th Texas legislature is scheduled to convene at the state capitol on Tuesday, January 10th. So far, 1,538 bills have been filed for consideration in the Texas House and Senate. Some of those bills have the city of San Antonio's attention. We spoke to the city's director of government affairs about its legislative priorities in the upcoming session. You can watch that report right now on KSAT.com. And this morning, a new year means new leadership here in Bear County. Peter Sakai sworn in as county judge yesterday. For some added luck, as he starts his term in office, the San Antonio Lion Dance Association performed the Chinese Lion Dance. The former district court judge was elected in November. Sakai said effective changes will happen when elected officials collaborate and listen to different perspectives from both their colleagues and the public. And I'm confident that our county commissioners, with my message, that we're going to work together and start tackling on the problems and finding solutions with common ground. Sakai takes over for Nelson Wolf, who served as Bear County judge for more than 20 years. Wolf chose not to run for re-election. This morning, a young man killed by a wrong way driver is now being honored in a big way. Asante Contreras' mission to save others is still being accomplished as an organ donor. The 20-year-old's dreams of becoming a paramedic were cut short two years ago when he was hit and killed by a wrong way driver running from police. But as an organ donor, Asante has saved lives. He and 43 other donors will be honored on the Donate Life float in the Rose Parade ahead of the Rose Bowl in Pasadena, California. I'm happy that in his own way he's able to share about organ donation and it'll bring awareness to people. So in a way, his legacy now will go on because it's for a good cause. It's helping people. And that's, that was so important to him. So he would like that. He would be thrilled. Asante's family is being flown to California so they can be front and center during the parade. You can watch the parade right here on KSAT 12. It is now 608 and 70 degrees. Still to come on GMSA, the price of Apple's latest iPhone could be dropping a lot in the near future. We'll look at why in your consumer headlines. Plus, just being stuck in an airport, like just needing to be with my mom. I mean, I, I just, I, I was already going crazy. A woman's desperate trip to reach her mother during the busy holiday season while she's calling the kindness of a stranger a miracle. And a look outside with live cam. 70 degrees, it just keeps getting hotter. Warm and humid today, but changes are on the way. Mike has your forecast coming up. And welcome back. It is 6-12, 12 minutes after 6 o'clock. This morning, the CEO of Southwest Airlines says the company will, quote, dial up the work to modernize its operations. Southwest returned to normal operations on Friday after canceling more than 15,000 flights during the week after Christmas. 
A winter storm and outdated technology caused the airline's point to point schedule to collapse. CEO Bob Jordan shared an end of year note with employees that says, in part, I know that we have work to do to restore your confidence in Southwest. You have our word that we will commit to the necessary resources to quickly examine and bolster our strategy for continuous improvement in our processes, our systems and more, end quote. Southwest has promised to refund and reimburse customers affected by those cancellations. You can find more information on that now on our website, KSAT.com. But before all that travel trouble started for Southwest, a ticketing agent for the airline is being praised for her actions during Thanksgiving. A San Antonio woman says the agent helped out tremendously on her mother's last day. She tells KSAT she'll be forever grateful for the kindness of a stranger. Amy Berry's mom, Edith, died suddenly on Thanksgiving while visiting family in Cancun. Berry rushed to the airport to get her mother and was told there were only two flights, one at 5 p.m. and the other at midnight. Even though gates were closed for the earlier flight, a gate agent named Rosie held the plane to make sure Barry was on it and by her mother's side sooner than later. She just said there was no way she wasn't going to get us on that flight. Like she knew when she saw my face that she that I had to get on that flight. Barry posted about the experience in a now viral Facebook post, hoping it'll soften people's hearts and encourage them to give grace to airline workers. Those were things that airlines used to do all the time, especially Southwest, all the time. You could always, and that's what made them such a, such a special airline. So, but they got some work to do now. It's 614, it's 70 degrees, and there's nothing going on on the road. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know Are you bored calls, over there? It, it's like a la di da morning, like la di da, mm -hmm. you know, really. Uh, but obviously, we want to keep you focused on the roadways. Uh, but no major issues right now. Yeah, it's been a very much like a vacation. I might as well just taking a day off. But you know what? That's okay because we're going to get you through your commute. You can see it's just picking up a little bit in some of these spots. 37 at Houston, light traffic there. And that's usually one of those spots where it has remained quiet for a little while longer. But let's get you to the map. We did have some road debris that was picked up here along Loop 410 on the uh, eastbound lanes of I-10. So you can see that uh, you have no issues that that's causing, but you want to be aware of such problems like that. And of course, you want to be aware of the construction that is taking place. Let's talk about Loop 410 on the northeast side of San Antonio because we will see some drilling work take place on Wednesday. That's uh, pretty quickly, though. January 4th uh, should wrap overnight, 9 in the evening at 5 in the morning. That's when we will see a right shoulder closure on Loop 410 eastbound. That will be between Karen Vital and Interchange Parkway, but of course you can scan the QR code that is now on your screen that will take you to our KSAT traffic page and that has a full list of all the closures that are taking place in the year of well in the month of January and of course we know it's a new year, but of course new closures are expected to be taking place as well. And there's still traffic and uh, still a lot of um, construction on 281. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I know you, I, 281 correspondent <laughs> reporter here. <laughs> still, I like that. Still a lot of work to do in 2023. Yeah, there's a lot of work. At least 2023, there. hopefully St. Mary's will be finished. Yeah, that's what they're going to. <laughs> wow. I drove through there the other day. I was like, man. And they've been, you know, they've laid some, some asphalt and it's, it's, it's like. It's progress, but it's slow progress, right? It always is when it comes to the roadways. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, Enough on Take that. Time. So, <laughs> want to talk about TCU game again? Uh, sure. we got, all right. Anybody feel like this yesterday morning? Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a great picture of that dog. What was that <laughs> dog doing up late Saturday night? Huh? That. Yeah. What was that dog doing on New Year's Eve? But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> At first New Year's Eve. Why they sometimes call it amateur hour? Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Just sun logs there. Thank you for the KSAT Connect picture. Uh, not a bad view out there by the airport. You can see it's a little fuzzy off in the background. We've got uh, eight miles visibility, so it's actually improved slightly. Seven Bernie states. There's a, a nice breeze, despite the fact we've got so much humidity out there. There's a fairly good breeze, so that's preventing a lot of the fog from uh, forming up. But there are just hints of it here and there. And we've been kind of saying all morning long, watch out for a few damp spots. Uh, there were a couple of damp spots on the roads when I was coming into work earlier this morning. Visibility at Rock Springs it actually improved, but it's a one and three quarter mile, two miles Eagle Pass, four at Carrizo Springs. So there's not anything just real, real thick. Be on the lookout for uh, some of that fog to thicken up. You may turn the corner in a low lying area and run into some of that fog. Temperatures, boy, that's a big story. It's 
It's almost 30 degrees, 29 degrees above normal right now at 70. Same thing in Port SA, Converse, as well as uh, Stinson at 71 degrees, 72 Castroville, and a couple of sprinkly showers. Now, this particular computer model is not as bullish. I mean, we've got a few uh, showers well off to the east popping up here, and this, of course, doesn't even show some of that mist and drizzle that may be out there. And then as the afternoon rolls on, notice how rain chances are pretty much slim to none in our area. We'll have some more showers well off to the east. As a matter of fact, there actually could be a couple of uh, stronger thunderstorms way, way off to the east. Nothing around here. We're going to see a lot of sunshine later on this afternoon going into this evening. Then we'll see a few more clouds in the late evening hours overnight as front moves on through. And this may actually squeeze out a couple of showers as that front moves through early, early tomorrow morning, starting off with some clouds and we're going to be clearing out after that. And of course, the humidity is finally going to be going away. It's not a real strong cold front that moves through here. It's one of those Pacific fronts. And again, it gets rid of the humidity, pulls in much drier air. That's going to allow for some cooler mornings, not necessarily back down to normal readings, but cooler mornings, nice afternoons, plenty of sunshine around here. Somewhat lower temperatures, 72 Wednesday, 68 on Thursday, still not down to where we should be. We're going to be spiking on Friday and then Saturday, a lot of humidity around here, but we're going to have more clouds. That's going to keep temperatures down a bit. And another front moves through on Sunday. That's the one that's going to pull in some cooler air and actually put us below normal finally by Sunday. And that'll give us a pretty good chance at some rain on Sunday and low temperatures though still even behind that front a lot of clouds hanging on in here not even down to normal readings at all this first week of uh, January and that low is going to be kind of scooching past here and that's what's going to give us that small chance or that help to pull that Pacific front through here overnight tonight and early tomorrow. So forecast today 74 degrees cloudy skies and then couple of uh, all these little sprinkles popping up behind there. No, we're going to have a lot of sunshine later on this afternoon. And then uh, we've got the front moving through later on tonight. We will see lower humidity tomorrow. Very pleasant the middle portion of the week with sunshine, coolish mornings, nice afternoons. Humidity comes back in late Friday, Saturday. Front moves through a couple of showers late Saturday. Slightly better chance of rain on Sunday and much cooler on Sunday. All right. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. 620, 70 degrees. After the break, Meta could decide soon on former President Donald Trump's return to Facebook. What we've learned just ahead. Moderate to severe eczema. It doesn't care if you have a date, a day off, or a double shift. Make your move and get out in front of eczema with steroid-free Sabinko. Not an injection. Sabinko is a once-daily pill for adults who didn't respond to previous treatments and is proven to help provide clearer skin and relieve itch fast. Sabinko continuously treats eczema whether you're flaring or not. Sabinko can lower your ability to fight infections, including TB. Before and during treatment, your doctor should check for infections and do blood tests. Tell your doctor if you've had hepatitis B or C, have flu-like symptoms, or are prone to infections. Do not take with medicines that prevent Prevent blood clots, serious, sometimes fatal infections, lymphoma, lung, skin, and other cancers. Serious heart-related events and blood clots can happen. People 50 and older with heart disease risk factors have an increased risk of serious heart-related events or death with JAK inhibitors. It's time to get out in front of eczema. Ask your doctor about Once Daily Sabinko. In this morning's GMA First Look, Behind bars, new details on the man accused of killing four University of Idaho students. He was perfectly friendly, nice to be around, um, talked, you know, he was a very intelligent person. The extradition hearing for 28-year-old suspect Brian Christopher Koberger is set for Tuesday afternoon. Overnight, Good Morning America going one-on-one -on -one with his public defender, who says Koberger plans to waive his extradition proceedings. He's certainly eager to get back to Idaho to start the legal process, and, and he believes that he will be exonerated when he does return. Koberger was pursuing his PhD in criminology at Washington State University. Yes, he was acting as a TA as well as grading papers. And coming up at 7 a.m., we'll report live from outside the Pennsylvania Correctional Facility where the suspect is being held and tell you what the victim's families are saying. With your GMA First Look, I'm Kana Whitworth, ABC News, Pennsylvania. It is now 624 and in your consumer headlines, a major decision expected from Meta. Facebook expected to announce if former President Donald Trump will be allowed back on the platform this week. 
Trump suspended until at least Saturday, a decision handed down back in 2021 after the January 6th attack on the Capitol. The Google Home app can now control some TV sets, but your TV has to be compatible with Google Assistant. The app now lets you control the TV's power as well as the volume and mute, along with some other functions. And online tech reports say the iPhone 15 will be released this fall. However, the company is considering a, quote, major price cut for the phone. The news comes as Apple deals with weak iPhone sales for the iPhone 14. Looking ahead, lottery hopefuls have one more day to buy tickets for the Mega Millions Powerball jackpot. There were no lucky winners matching all six numbers Friday night, so the jackpot is expected to grow past $785 million ahead of Tuesday night's drawing. If you remember, the jackpot worth $1.3 billion was won this past summer in Illinois. And right now on KSAT.com, a new year means new fun activities for families across San Antonio. We've got a list of events going on in town and the surrounding areas throughout the month of January. It's all online right now on KSAT.com. Time now, 625, 70 degrees outside. And still ahead at 630, minimum wage is going up this week in over 20 states. We'll look at where and how much more people could be earning. And we're celebrating San Antonio's first baby of the new year, what the hospital gave this new bundle of joy to celebrate. And outside with Trident's Guide, things running pretty smooth. Today's the day. Today must be a good day to be on the road because nothing's happening out there. Stephen Cabasos is over there like drinking coffee, taking a nap. <laughs> Wake him up and get him to give all your details. Coming up, you're watching Good Morning San Antonio. Investigators still looking into the cause of a fire in a vacant home overnight, but one man has his suspicions. I'll tell you more about it. I'm ABC's Justin Finch. The Vatican now preparing a final farewell for former Pope Benedict XVI. How mourners are paying tribute today before his historic funeral this week. Outside with live cam, unless you're going outside right now, you really don't have anything to worry about because it's going to get warmer. And whatever kind of mist or drizzle or whatever was out there this morning is going to be gone by this afternoon. So it's going to be a really warm spring-like day. Good morning. And you're right. You're, you're probably starting your morning with some cafecito, something warm. But you might need something cooler because it's going to get a little bit warm. Yep. It's going to be hot Ice today. <laughs> I mean, hot and humid, basically. Yeah. Yesterday we were upper 70s. Today we're going for 80. Plenty of sunshine. Humidity is sticking around here. So it'll be anything like, uh, but like what it should be for January. In about a week, we'll get some more January weather coming on in here. And it will be more pleasant midweek. We got a front moving through tonight. Not a big blast of cold air. More on that in a second. First of all, a little murky out there. We can still see the control tower out there at the airport. So visibility is okay. We've got a decent breeze. And so that's what's preventing a lot of fog from forming up. Despite the fact we've got so much humidity, these dew points are well up into the 60s. 70 degrees right now. The normal low temperature is 41. So yeah, we are. 30 basically above normal right now at the airport. Visibility is okay. There are hints of fog out there. Saw a couple of just little damp patches on the roads here and there this morning. Not any big deal as far as uh, any rain. There's nothing showing up on radar. Uh, we've got a little bit more fog over there. Rock Springs has actually improved slightly. Some along the coastal plain, or excuse me, along the uh, Rio Grande Valley and then some along the coastal plain as well. But again, it's not a huge deal because of the uh, the wind that we have out there temperatures mid 60s mid upper 60s low 70s all around the area a ton of mountain cedar the update account is going to come out in about an hour or so but yeah that's not a great way to start off the new year with all that mountain cedar almost 13,000 so warm and humid uh, maybe a sprinkle some mist a little patch of fog here and there and then we're going to see more sunshine later on today there will be some showers well off to the east and maybe even a couple of stronger storms if you are uh, heading up 35 well past Austin or out toward Houston later on today that front moves through tonight that's going to get rid of the humidity so that will allow somewhat cooler temperatures in the morning not really down to normal readings but it's going to be really pleasant pleasant throughout the middle chunk of the week. Just very, very nice. And then by the weekend, humidity comes back in here very quickly. Saturday is still going to be mild, and the timing of this front is still a little bit iffy right now, but it looks like it's going to be late Saturday into Sunday, and it will be cooler with some showers on Sunday. More on that in just a couple of seconds. Time saver traffic. Anything going on? 
Not a whole lot over here, Mike. As you can see right now, the roads have been quiet. That has been the story for the last week, and it seems that's the story as we are starting Monday morning here. You can check out US 98 couples again. That's always expected a busy shot, but on a normal day, we'd probably see a lot more traffic out there. 281 in Tacoma looks pretty quiet as well. So again, perfect opportunity to take advantage of some of these quiet roadways, but make sure you check your vehicle because we do at least have one stall reported here along Loop 410 southbound at Southton Road over on the southeast side of San Antonio. It's not causing any trouble with traffic, but still want to make sure that you can arrive to your destination on time and of course safely. Wide look at the map uh, just shows again a lot of green out there. That has been the color of the week, and that is what we continue to see as we start Monday morning. So the last few days have been quiet out there on the roads, but still take it easy. It is a little bit past 630, so we know things tend to pick up at this time. Even though kids are staying at home today and we know some folks may not have to return to work, there are still people that have to travel. So just remember to be kind out on the roadways. We'll keep you posted on a few closures as well. David Tiffany. Thank you, Stephen. I knew this morning a local man trying to figure out his next move after an overnight fire. It actually broke out in a vacant home, one half of a duplex in the 1000 block of Colorado Street, but it also caused damage to the man's home. Katrina Weber is there. She's joining us live now. So how bad is that damage, Katrina? Well, again, we're talking about a duplex. So the fire started in the right side of this home, which was vacant. It's very serious damage to that side. A man lives in this other side of the house, and he says that some of the rooms of his place also have some damage from that fire. Let me give you a look at the, how things were earlier this morning. The fire department got called here a little bit after 2.30 this morning. And again, they did find the fire inside the vacant half of the duplex. Now, again, a man lives in the other side. I had a chance to talk to him. He says that uh, he believes that there were some people, possibly homeless people, uh, going in and out of there and that uh, they may have had something to do with the fire that woke him up very early this morning. He says he smelled the smoke. He got up and got out. Fire department went in. Investigators still looking for the exact cause of the fire. As for the man who has been displaced because of that fire next door to him, uh, he says he's not sure what he's going to do next. He doesn't have any family here. He really has nowhere to go, but he says that the American Red Cross has been here, did offer him some help, although he is now waiting to talk to the owner of this property to figure out uh, what he can do as far as living, uh, living, uh, living space goes. But again, no word on the exact cause of the fire in the vacant half of this duplex. Reporting live northwest of downtown, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. Topping your morning headlines, a 5.4 magnitude earthquake rattled parts of Northern California yesterday. The quake hit in Rio Dell. That's near the Pacific Coast. A stronger earthquake with a 6.4 magnitude struck the same area nearly two weeks ago. That quake was blamed for two deaths and about a dozen injuries. Yesterday's quake did not cause any injuries, deaths or widespread damage, but it did knock out power to hundreds of people. Millions of people in the U.S. are starting the new year with a pay raise. Starting January 1st, hourly minimum wages in 23 states rose as part of previously scheduled efforts to reach $15 an hour or cost of living changes. The raise affects nearly 8.5 million workers in places like Delaware, Michigan, Nebraska, New York, and New Mexico. The federal minimum wage of $7.25 per hour hasn't changed since 2009. Meanwhile, final preparations are underway for the funeral of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI. A funeral mass is set for this Thursday, marking the first time in the modern era that a current pope will eulogize a retired one. ABC's Justin Finch has the details on this historic farewell. <laughs> This week, an historic moment in the Vatican. Pope Benedict was, uh, before all, a man of faith, personal faith, very profound and solid. A grieving Roman Catholic Church now preparing for the funeral mass of Pope Emeritus Benedict XVI, who died Saturday at age 95. The Vatican saying a nurse picked up his final words said in Italian as, Lord, I love you. President Biden tweeting, Jill and I join Catholics and others around the world in mourning the passing of Pope Emeritus the 16th. Mourners are paying final respects today at the Vatican St. Peter's Basilica, where the former Pope's body will lie in state for the next three days. We thought he was a wonderful man and um, appreciated his pontificate and his um, his guidance. I thought he was uh, too old-fashioned and 
not the right direction for the Catholic Church. But it's sad. The German-born Pope, formerly Cardinal Joseph Ratzinger, will be remembered for his conservative leadership of the church and for becoming the first pontiff in 600 years to resign, perhaps setting a new precedent for the current and future popes. The fact that Pope Benedict did it, uh, you know, and is seen as a traditional Orthodox uh, person and priest, uh, really opens up the way for, for example, uh, Francis to resign if he wants. On Thursday, the world will witness for the first time in modern history a current pope presiding over his predecessor's funeral mass. The city of Rome expecting as many as 60,000 to attend. And Pope Francis is remembering his predecessor fondly, calling the Pope Emeritus a faithful servant of the gospel and of the Catholic Church. Justin Finch, ABC News, Washington. Back here at home, San Antonio's Archbishop held a special mass to honor the late Pope this past weekend at the San Fernando Cathedral. Archbishop Garcia Sier remembered his encounter with the Pope when he was installed as Archbishop. Parishioners acknowledged the legacy left behind from his service and duties. I was able to, to learn from him, uh, understanding, uh, patience and humility. I think that was probably one of his greatest legacies is his saying that we were made for so much more that we could do better. A lot of the people KSAT spoke to say they hope Pope Benedict's legacy of service continues to have an impact on people everywhere. It is 639 and 70 degrees. Up next on GMSA, the time after the holidays can be difficult for people battling loneliness. How you can avoid the dangerous side effects of post-holiday blues in just moments. Welcome back. It is 642. You know, this morning, it's no secret that high blood pressure, heart disease, depression and early death are all risks of smoking. But surprisingly, loneliness can also have the same effects. And as we move past the holidays, research says around a third of the U.S. is likely to feel extreme loneliness in January. But if you are feeling blue, Nancy Alvarez reports on one simple thing you can do to combat that negative side effect. It's the most wonderful time of the year. Not everyone is feeling the cheer this time of year. 55% of Americans say they experience the holiday blues, with most attributing it to loneliness. Researchers found these negative emotions speed up the biological clocks more than cigarettes. The effect of social isolation and loneliness on our health is as powerful as things like smoking, high blood pressure, obesity. Being in a constant state of loneliness yeah, increases inflammation and in turn can raise the risk of several other diseases. A study from Florida State University found that loneliness can increase dementia risk by 40 percent. But researchers at Washington University in St. Louis found that the more positive social interactions a person had during the day, the more purposeful and the less lonely they felt. You can get those interactions by joining groups with similar interests, like a hiking group, an art class, or a fitness club. They also say a simple call can also go a long way. December 28th is National Call a Friend Day, so call and reach out to your loved ones if you can't be there. It can benefit their mental and physical health. I'm Nancy Alvarez reporting. So I'm getting a call on the 28th from you, right? Call a friend? Yeah, we'll call you. Okay. Check on you. Make oh. sure everything's good. Okay. I'll we call should you all call each other. Yes, all of us. <laughs> right now we're going to call Stephen Cavazos and see what's happening. You know, I did say the other time, a minute ago, you were... See, Hello? Oh. Hello? <laughs> that you were drinking coffee and taking a nap. <laughs> Stephen Cavazos is always on top of the trap. Oh, you so. know what? Uh, but it has been uh, pretty much like a vacation over here. You're, you're not too far off, David Sears. Let's get a quick look here at the roadways because it has been pretty quiet throughout the entire morning. For Tinnacula, but I just checked an update from TxDOT. Actually, a stall vehicle reported out there, though difficult to make out from that shot. Ted at Callahan, uh, if you are uh, obviously a regular viewer with us, and we hope that you are, you typically see a lot more traffic in a lot of these shots at Transguide, but because it's still a holiday, folks are still 
still taking it easy and hopefully enjoying the traffic views from the comforts of their couch. But again, as I mentioned, stall is going to be the trending topic at this hour. 410 southbound at Southton Road. We still have this one reported on the southeast side. But let's take a drive over here. Very big leap as we take you up to I-10 westbound at Vance Jackson Road. Another stall vehicle. So that does seem to be the uh, trouble right now. Check your vehicle before you get out on the roadways. Make sure everything's working properly. And of course, if you need a fuel up, let's take one last look here at the gas prices as reported today by AAA. The average gas price in Bear County reported at $2.79. Around the state here in the Lone Star State, we're looking at $2.84. And around the country, $3.21. So this is actually a few cents up uh, what I reported on Friday, but uh, that is what AAA is reporting as of today if you need to fuel up before any big road travel plans. But back here in town, things are quiet. Uh, really just has been that trend for the last few days or so, but I'm enjoying it because I know when school kicks back up again Ooh. and we have people returning to work, it will get busier out there. So just mm -hmm. enjoy when, that. When does that happen? Tomorrow? Yeah. Wednesday? Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. Starting Somewhere tomorrow. today. No. Sorry, kids. Don't want to bring that up. <laughs> We were just talking about that National Call a Friend Day. That was December 28th, mm -hmm. but anytime you can call. And, yeah, and that reminded me because I did call my mother on the 28th. It was her birthday. So. Oh, happy birthday. Yeah, yeah, she is 96 years old. Ooh, so Happy birthday. Yeah, still still going along pretty happy good. Happy birthday. So. But just call. Yeah, I mean, why not? Call somebody and just kind of... We should make it a, the like, 28th every month, so at least we all remember. Yeah, well, me. check it. Hey, how's it okay. going? So I think the key there is call. Right. Don't text. Don't email. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm not a texter. I don't want to like texting. I mean, I don't. I don't like texting. I prefer a phone call. Yeah. I think that's it's great. It's nice. But this is, he's got numbers on it. A lot of people forget. You know. Got, it is a phone. What's the numbers? <laughs> yeah. And you could like talk. All right. The new year and Bubba. Bubba. He's happy to celebrate. Oh. Bubba. Oh wow. I wonder how difficult it was to get Bubba to wear those glasses and the hat. So. <laughs> I love the beads. <laughs> oh, my goodness. That's a great shot. <laughs> Thank you very much for the uh, KSAC Connect picture. All right. Uh, visibility is okay out there at the airport. Just a, a hint of reduced visibility. Eight miles, five. Port of say Castroville heading out 90, up uh, 10 as well. A little bit of fog around Pleasanton. And temperatures are 25 to 30 degrees above normal right now. And it's very warm, very, very humid, although we've got a bit of a breeze. So that's helping to prevent any of the uh, fog from forming up and this 10% right in here. If there is a sprinkle out there, a little bit of mist, something like that, that's what's a, that's taking into account. But other than that, it's just going to be cloudy and and kind of well, just soupy out there. Basically, is the best way to describe it. We'll see a little bit of sunshine by noon, mid 70s. Then we top off at 80 today, so we'll be 15, 20 degrees above normal for our high temperature with again plenty of humidity out there. So it is going to feel like almost an early summer kind of a day. Now we do have a front moving through later on tonight and that's going to it's not a big cold front, but it's a, one of those dry line that moves through here or a, a drier front, I should say, to be more specific. And so that's going to get rid of the humidity uh, as far as any rain, more rain off to the east. And actually there could be a couple of stronger thunderstorms potentially well out there to the east. And then we're going to see more sunshine later on today and going into the early evening hours, then a few more clouds late tonight. And this computer model, as you can see, is not real bullish. That's when the front moves on through here. It may squeeze out a couple of showers in the wee hours tomorrow morning. Starting off with some clouds, then we see more sunshine in the afternoon. It's going to be a beautiful middle portion of the week because we get the humidity dropping down as the front moves on through here. So we'll have cooler mornings, not cold, cold mornings, and then pleasant afternoons still above normal all week long. Humidity works its way back in here pretty quickly late Friday, especially into Saturday. Then another front moves on through here. But as far as this really, really cold air up to the north of us, that's going to pretty much stay up there. We'll get little kind of tastes of it, if you will, but no big blast. Nothing like we had, obviously, a week, a week and a half ago coming on through here. 74 degrees today at noon. Cloudy skies and then high temperature is going to get up to 80. Mostly sunny skies and very humid. Then the front moves through later on tonight. That gets rid of the humidity. So it's going to be nice the next few days, middle chunk of the week. Still not quite down to where we should be, but jackets in the morning, not in the afternoon. 68 on Thursday, and then the humidity comes back in here again by late Friday, Saturday. A couple of showers late Saturday into Sunday as that front moves on through. We'll be at 55 then on Sunday, so back down to finally kind of a week behind from January, but back down to January temperatures and then some by late in the week, weekend.
Yes. I'm thinking that, I'm speechless. I'm like, that hairspray, that's all I'm thinking about, extra hairspray or just put my hair in a bun. Oh, because It's going to be hum humid. Yeah. Ugh. I'm sorry. All right, thanks, Mike. <laughs> 650 and 70 degrees. Tomorrow on GMSA, if you're looking to save some money on your taxes, we'll look at ways to reduce what you could owe Uncle Sam this April. And once again, outside with the so you're saying load up on the hairspray? Yes. Or? Or, or just a cap, or baseball just a cap. cap. Yeah. yeah, that'll work. Yeah. Whatever, whatever, whatever works for you. Today on GMSA at 9, we're kicking off the new year with the story of a local teen who opened her own restaurant with the help of her family. The CEO of Sarah's Barbacoa on the northwest side was just, she was just 15 years old when she opened the business, and I got to meet her and her family. We put a lot of care and love into it. Like, we want to show that we can use our own, like, food and voice to spread, like, love. Tune in today at GMSA at 9 to see this full story and hear Sarah's message to other teens who have big dreams. All right, before we go, we want to meet one of the San Antonio's newest baby residents, Baby New Year. Avery Rose Jacks made her debut just seconds Good. after midnight at North Central <laughs> Baptist. And makes her the city's first baby of 2023. She missed Christmas by a week, but she'll bring home quite a haul of gifts with her. This year marks the 23rd year local hospitals have donated gifts for Baby New Year, including a car seat and portable crib. I think she was born like two seconds after midnight. So precious. When she yawned, I loved it. <laughs> She's like, oh. Well, she worn out. <laughs> Her and mom probably needed a nap. After All right. Midnight, so there you go. Well, let's take a look at the traffic. Yeah, well, welcome to the world. And right now we are taking a look here at San Antonio roads. Things have been pretty quiet all morning long for 10 at Gulebita. There's really not been any trouble out there. As we get you there, you can see some of those north and southbound lanes are moving along without any trouble. Now, this was actually a spot where we did have a stalled vehicle that was reported by Transguide, but it uh, looks like that's already cleared out. So better news to report out there and we'll actually leave you on rotation as we get the morning rolling there. Things have been fine, but we'll keep a close eye on things throughout Good Morning America. A couple of damp spots on the roads here and there. As you can see, not bad over there by the airport. A little murky off in the background. Hints of fog here and there. Not really a big deal. It is warm. It's almost hot and humid out there, basically. It's going to be hot and humid later on today. 80 for a high temperature. Then we get a front to move through here late tonight, early tomorrow morning. Gets rid of the humidity. Coolish mornings, still mild afternoons. And then a bigger front moves through and knocks us down to the mid-50s Sunday. All right. Thanks for watching. We'll see you back here at 9. GMA is next.